Well, good day there, everybody. Welcome back. I'd like to, uh, first of all, acknowledge that there's a lot of typewriter aficionados this very day who've made the trek out to West Virginia for Herman's massive typewriter gathering. And I wish I could be there. I haven't attended that gathering. But uh, anyways, I'm with you guys in spirit. Today, uh, we're going to do a little retro thing. So if you go back to the year 2009, do you remember the year 2009? This was one of the great uh, formative years of the typosphere. And some of the notable early pioneers of typewriter blogging were in the height of their blogging days. And one of the things that happened in 2009 was color casting. Do you guys remember color casting? Do you even know what I'm talking about? I'm going to send you a link below to some of the notable blog articles back in 2009 from the typewriter bloggers. Somebody, I think it was Mike Clemens, who was thinking about the demise of typewriter ribbons and having to use carbon paper perhaps with typewriters. And he also started thinking about those old mimeograph uh, ditto machine uh, stencils and how they worked. And he came up with the idea, along with Strike Through and a few other bloggers uh, simultaneously kind of came up with the idea of using crayons to make your own colored carbon paper technique. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to explore using crayons and other materials to make our own makeshift colorful carbon paper for typing. Stay tuned. Well, to start with, I'm going to just start with a piece of printer paper, copy paper, and uh, some crayons. And I don't even know if these are the right kind of crayons. What I mean by right kind of crayons is Traditional crayons are waxy, but they have these new formulations of crayons, and this is the only ones I had in the house, but these are neon crayons. Uh, we're going to try them, though. So the idea is you want to cover your paper with a really heavy, waxy, continuous layer of crayon, and that'll act like carbon paper. Uh, so let's uh, start that, and I have to figure out what colors to use. And Mike Clemens' article he had uh, talked about ditto machines and mimeograph machines, and he was kind of referring to this kind of purplish color that you get from the classic mimeograph or ditto machines. And so I don't have a purple color crayon in this little pack, but I have two colors here. This is carnation pink, and there is a, what do they call this, shocking pink. And maybe I'll just mix them together and see what happens. I'm going to make a area here that's just really heavy waxed with crayon. I take my other color and maybe do it crosswise to it. Well this is about as heavy as I can make it but it still has some little light colored spaces in there so I'm gonna have to do something with kind of melting semi melting the crayon into the paper. I think I'm gonna use a hair dryer. Let me go out to the dark room and get my hair dryer. Well, I'm not so sure about this. If these are the right kind of crayons. Okay, I've put another layer of crayon on top of the first layer. All right, heat gun. Well, it's not entirely even, but it's thicker than it was, so maybe we should try it. Put it in a typewriter and try it. All right, so here is the side I want to type on. So flip it over. The great moment of truth. Well, it's kind of a, kind of not really, not really anything going on there. Barely can see it. Yeah, these are probably the wrong kind of crayons. Don't really work well, or maybe it's the paper. So I went up to my neighborhood Staples, and what did I get? Well, first of all, I needed a date stamp. Okay, that's not crayons. Oh, they had the whiteout correction fluid in a pen. I'm gonna try that, maybe do a review of that, and then some miniature correction tape. <clears throat> but that's not why we came. 
Yes, the Crayola Classic 64 color box with the sharpener. Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to use Clairefontaine paper to start with. And we need like a purplish color that kind of resembles the old uh, Ditto machine stuff. What is this? Orchid, they're calling it. Let's try Orchid, shall we? Let's just kind of define an area here. And we can color this in. Well, okay, so that's about as dark as I can get it. It looks like it's not going to fill in any of the little light spots anymore. And I need to shake off the crumbs. I don't want the crumbs getting into my typewriter. So I'm going to try this without heating it up with a hairdryer first, and then I'll heat it up with a hairdryer and try it again and see what difference it makes. Okay, so perhaps you remember this new brother made Ward Signature 300 typewriter from last week, the one that had the ribbon problem. So I'm going to put this typewriter onto the stencil position so the ribbon won't actually raise up and maybe it'll get a darker imprint. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the same three layers that I've done before onto this Walmart purchased letter writing paper. All right, a little bit lo louder of a machine, I would say. This is a elite font machine, and it def definitely makes a ooh a darker imprint. Hello, I did three layers of the dark blue blue crayon, which I thought was quite a bit darker than the whatever purplish stuff I was using before. Melted a little bit with a hair dryer between each layer and so this is really really waxy even through the back you can see it's kind of halfway diffused through because of being melted so i'm using the brother ward's brother signature 300 on the stencil position so you might be able to just see the impact of the non-inked type slugs but uh, when i peeled it apart the two sheets apart i heard this like it was sticking, like, oh, that's a good sign, right? The wax was transferring, and it actually looks fairly halfway, maybe okay. I mean, it's, it's a little uneven. It's probably about the best that I've seen so far. So, I mean, it's readable if you had to actually use it. And the great thing is I have 64 different colors to choose from, although on white paper, you know, the light colored crayons obviously aren't going to transfer very well. Which makes me think, what if I did light colored crayons and typed on the black paper? Hmm. Okay, so I've made a yellowish, heavy yellow coating of Crayola crayon, and it's actually yellow, yellow, from the 64 color Crayola box. Um, I've tried to make a heavy layer. You might be able to see the shininess, how waxy it is. By the way, uh, this reminds me, I've noticed with crayons when you're trying to do shading, different colors of Crayola from the same box have a different quality of shading, like almost as if the coloring dyes in the formula affect the softness or hardness of the wax. And you'd think after all these decades of manufacture that they would have all this figured out so that it's very consistent, but there still is a difference between different colors. And uh, so I have not um, I have not melted this at all with a hair dryer, so I just want to start it from scratch. Now, I have some black paper. It's kind of like scrapbooking paper. These are like 11 by 16 inch sheets, something like that. So the problem with black paper is going to be you don't have as much of a selection of different kinds of paper. And the surface properties of the paper might affect how well the, the crayon transfers. There is some stickiness, but unfortunately, the transfer is very faint. It's just real faint yellow.
Okay, so for round two of this failed experiment, let's try taking some wax paper and I'm going to type on it. Uh, hopefully we'll transfer wax to some plain paper and then by using a watercolor wash, hopefully if there's enough <clears throat> wax transferred to the paper, when you do the, the, the color wash, it will resist the wax and you'll have a negative image. So cut it down to width. All right, let's see about Okay, there is our typing, and we might have a waxy, a waxy impression, we hope. Ooh, interesting. Well, it sort of shows up. When you're using the wax paper technique uh, and then going over it with a watercolor wash, it's real important that you not make the wash too wet. You want to use a dark color of watercolor and you want to get a lot of pigment in your brush, a flat brush, but don't make it too wet. And barely get the tone of the watercolor on the paper without wetting it too much and then it that's the best experience I was able to get back in 2009 when I did this. Okay, I just did it with wax paper and Clairefontaine letter writing paper. Okay, let's see if I can get this to work now. Okay, don't touch it, let it dry. That's probably the best result I've had yet. I think it's pretty much readable. Look at this, aluminum foil. This was the other part of the summer of 2009 that was so wonderful, is typing on aluminum foil. So I'm just going to put a backing sheet of paper underneath the foil. I'm going to use this sheet of Clairefontaine. And uh, I actually have too much foil, so I'm just going to fold it in half. And I'm going to try typing onto the, uh, the dull side of the foil. All right. <laughs> now isn't that cool? I think it is very cool. And the cool thing about it is typing onto two layers, I have a second layer. So anyway, this is kind of cool. This is a novelty. You could write some poems on aluminum foil cut it out, cut the little squares out, and maybe glue them, paste them onto a little card, a little presentation like that. So before we close, I wanted to try the aluminum foil typing again on a single layer of aluminum foil with a typewriter that has a stencil position. So instead of transferring ink to it, like the blue ink from the Skywriter, it'll be just uninked. Typing on the dull side of the foil, so I think it's easier to read without all that shininess. So let's thread that in there and listen to all that loud, crinkly aluminum foil sound. An elite font aluminum foil typing. I think it's pretty cool. Well, that was fun. I don't know how you guys liked it, but that brought back a lot of memories. If you were in the typewriter community back in 2008, 2009, you might remember all this. I'll leave some links down below to some of the blogs uh, that we're talking about crayon casting and doing these alternative ways of making impressions on paper using typewriters. So I thought as far as the as reviewing our results, I thought first of all for crayons you need a really heavy layer, multiple layers of crayon and the classic Crayola seems, at least the stuff I've tried, that seems to work the best. Getting a consistently heavy layer is really important because even this stuff you can see there might, there, you might be able to see there's kind of a mottled appearance. It doesn't make a perfect perfectly 
even film of wax. I might try putting this on a hot plate and melting the crayon onto the paper to make a more even coating. I think the backing paper, like this is Clairefontaine, uh, I don't think the kind of backing paper of the crayon itself is that important as long as your layer of Crayola is, is heavy enough. But it seems like the kind of paper you're transferring it to is really important. Uh, it has a lot to do with how well it transfers. And again, this was that universal writing paper that I got from Walmart. It seemed to work the best. It's a thinner kind of a paper, maybe 15 or 16 pound. It's certainly not 20 pound. And the darker the crayon, of course, the better it's going to transfer. This uh, test I did with the blue colored Crayola seemed to work the best in this combination of materials. As far as using light colored crayons onto black, darker black paper, it seems like you know, the kind of paper you're using is really important, and this uh, heavier kind of craft paper apparently just doesn't, it's too fibrous and the wax doesn't really stick to it. I think you need a smoother kind of a paper, but unfortunately it's harder to get uh, different finishes of paper and heavinesses of paper in black, so that's the limitation of using light colored crayons. So. When we go into the future, after the zombie apocalypse, we may have to just be hoarding dark colored crayons for a while. However, the aluminum foil typing I thought was really a lot of fun. Now, obviously, aluminum foil is not economical to use. <laughs> it's, you know, you think about the industrial capacity and the cost uh, to manufacture aluminum in thin sheets. But it certainly works really well. I love the look of this. And even with a machine without any ribbon at all, it works great as long as the type slugs hit the platen. Uh, this uh, Brother Made Ward sign uh, Signature 300 that I worked on last week, it has a good imprint now with the ribbon. But putting it on the stencil position, that's what you want to do. Make sure you use the stencil position so you get the type slug hitting directly against the backside of either your crayon cutter covered paper or right onto the uh, aluminum foil itself. And again, I kind of thought the aluminum foil works best with the dull side, having the imprint on readable on the dull side, but uh, it was really cool. And I could actually see that this would make a lot of fun uh, typing letters to people, little short, like a, a small letter size envelope and a rectangle of aluminum foil put in there with a short little letter. I think that would be a lot of fun. Now, as far as which of these techniques might be the most suitable for a post-Western industrial society, post-apocalyptic, post-zombie apocalypse, uh, whatever scenario, I, I really got to think that the, uh, the wax paper watercolor wash technique because you could make wax paper out of paraffin, candles, tallow, anything source of primitive wax kind of substance that people used to make uh, centuries ago. You can coat paper with it. And then as far as your, your wash, you can make a, a, a suitable watercolor-like substance out of you know fruit dyes, like blueberry kind of berries and stuff. You can make a watercolor wash. So... It seems like that might be the most suitable way to do this going forward into the far future, regardless of what <laughs> happens technologically. Well, I hope this gave you guys some inspiration on some of the craftier things you can do with your typewriters, alternative ways of making words and letters imprinted onto paper or other surfaces. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day and stay creative. See you later. Well, I won't actually see you. I hope you'll see me later. Hope you'll see me later.